Suzanne Mishenko and I'm here at Disneyland Resort celebrating the diamond anniversary and I'm here with Justin who is a Disney archivist which is really just kind of a nice way to say you're a Disney geek, right? Professional Disney yeah. <laughs> And as you can see he's worked his magic and we're in black and white right now. Yes. But uh, he's going to show us some things that come from the history of Disneyland the last 60 years and so we want to see those in color so can you do a little... Yes, let's, uh, let's crank these 1955 cameras to so 2015. <laughs> All right. Well, we've brought a few items from the Walt Disney Archives here to show off. Yeah. And um, we'll start down here with opening day. Um, Disneyland opened on July 17th, 1955. And that was a press preview day. About 10,000 people were sent invitations, very much like this one. Um, and uh, also parking passes for that day. Oh, cool. And um, 28,000 people showed up. <laughs> so there were quite a few counterfeit tickets uh, running around that day. And, I guess um, so. Yes, yeah, so um, later tickets went to Ticket Books, as um, many people are familiar with. That was um, October of 55 that we switched and to And this is where books. we get the e-ticket? Yes, yeah, so that like was a, another innovation was 1959. Walt was never happy with Disneyland staying the same, so he built the Matterhorn, the Monorail, and the Submarine Voyage all in the same year. And so... That's when they premiered the e-ticket, and uh, that sort of created a whole new class of attractions, as we now call the e-ticket. Right. <laughs> Great. Now, what else we got here? We have... This is actually... This. Yeah, this is the, um, the first Disneyland guidebook, and it's so early, actually, that it has illustrations in it instead of photography. And um, the cool thing about it was that Walt actually argued that the price should be way lower. He wanted it 25 cents uh -huh. because his idea was if everybody bought one, they'll have it on their coffee table, and then everyone would know about Disneyland. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. He's always thinking. Exactly. He's always thinking. Now, speaking of Walt, what do we got right here? So this is actually Walt's number one name tag. In 1955, when the park opened, name tags were bronze like that. They had numbers. Uh -huh. They didn't have the, um, the cast members' names on them. And it wasn't actually until 1962 that they premiered the plastic with their names oh. on their name tags. But okay. this was number one, and of course that was Walt, Walt. Disney's. Yeah. Yes, of course. He is number one. He gets that He gets that honor. Yes. And these mouse ears are pretty special, too. Yeah, well, on opening day in, um, on July 17th, the Mouseketeers made their debut. They hadn't actually been on television until that point. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So much. <laughs> and it wasn't until October of that year that the Mickey Mouse Club premiered. Uh -huh. um, Right after that, mouse ears became a phenomenon across the country, yeah. and um, very shortly after, these were sold in the park, um, made by the Binet Albi Company, um, and they actually operated the Mad Hatter stores here in the park as well for a while. Yeah. Another really famous headgear, though, from the 1950s and 60s is the Kepi Cap, which looks like a construction helmet for kids, but um, they were actually popular. If you ever see footage or photos from uh -huh. the 50s and 60s, kids loved these helmets. Yeah, I love all the old, you know, the Tomorrowland logo yes. and the, oh, the Disneyland. Really nice. I love all this stuff. Well, thank you for taking the time Absolutely, to Absolutely, my pleasure. And thank you. If you want more information on the Diamond Celebration, you can go to my blog, SuzanneMachenko.com. Thank you.